TV Photo X 1.5 TFX and welcome back to another video. Well, Photokina is in full swing as we all know and it doesn't seem to be an end of the marvelous new technologies that are, you know, shown at this. But this time it's not a market, direct to market technology. This is a concept that a famous brand has put out and I'm talking of course about Hasselblad. And Hasselblad, who has now shown at Photokina the V1D concept camera. Well, V1D, this seems to be a kind of a throwback to the Hasselblad 500 series of cameras, at least when it comes to the overall look of the camera. And speaking about the looks, it seems to me at least, my initial thoughts when I first saw the press pictures of the camera concept, I think they have taken a, uh, they've been taking a page out of Steve Jobs' uh, legacy because this camera really reminded me of the aesthetics of the iPhone 4. But keep in mind, this is a concept camera, so it's not a complete system. It's not a complete working system. It's a concept to see if the, mar if the market is up for it. So. We have examples uh, before that shows that concepts can become a reality if the public, if the public is interested in it. Case in point, uh, if you take an automotive example, Audi came out with the Audi TT. That was a concept car that became a reality because of popular demand. The same can go for the uh, what was it? The Lotus Esprit was also a you know concept that Colin Chapman didn't even really want to recognize as a potential car, but popular demand made it possible. So maybe this is the same story, hopefully, maybe. But I think that Hasselblad might have some kinks they need to iron out before uh, they put this one into produ production. I mean, when we got the news about uh, Fujifilm re releasing the, you know, the GFX that is gonna be out 2017, with six lenses and all you know the specs about it and that they are really planning ahead and it really gave the Hasselblad X1D uh, a run for its money but um, now this one the V1D and V for you guys who doesn't know that's the Roman numeral for five uh, so it's uh, a little bit of an homage to the 500 series cameras which are the more original Hasselblad cameras but anyway this is some of my spontaneous thoughts looking over this camera and keep in mind it's a concept so there might be changes uh, later on but it's marketed to be a modular system but yet it doesn't seem to have a removable digital back that seems a bit odd, really. <clears throat> They've gone with a kind of a older iPhone-esque minimalist design, but have they gone too minimalist? You can go minimalists and it's functional, but when you go too minimalist, it kind of become uh, limiting. Case in point, you can look at the uh, Mamiya 645e model that came out in 2000. So that is a camera that can be a little bit too minimalist. Yeah, but <clears throat> do they have do they have enough physical controls on this camera? It seems to be a little bit of a renaissance now it seems uh, with cameras having a lot of analog, you know, controls on it, you know, like uh, Fuji's other cameras, you have the Sony Alpha line. Uh, Nikon and Canon, uh, it's a little bit of a mixed bag and so on, but it seems like a lot of cameras today, I mean, Nikon did a failed attempt with the FD, but it seems like Fuji took the same approach but made it right. And uh, I don't really know, I, well, I would like to hear from you now, dear viewers. Put a comment in the link, in the, you know, in the comment section below and what are your thoughts about this. But are there too many or too few physical controls on this camera and do you have to go into, you know, menus and so on 
on the back screen and go into you know menus and sub menus and so on it, I mean that's basically why Nokia the Nokia telephones went uh, out of fashion because they were too made for engineers they were too engineered with sub menus and menus and sub menus and menus and menus so that is a little bit of a concern that it becomes minimalist but then software wise it becomes too complex <clears throat> well ba they basically they've blend blended in a lot of design cues from the old 120 film 500 series and they've managed to put in two displays in this one top and one back but uh, can both of these displays perform the same functions for instance if you have a videographer because they've actually hinted at that this camera would be a little bit about video as well so can you make use the back screen with a viewfinder you know like a lot of filmmakers might want them they might not just want to have the top screen to have as a live view but can the back display also do live view that's something that I would like like to know from Hasselblad and um, but the top screen they've actually showed this with a lot of pictures where you had you know waist level viewfinders and pentaprism viewfinders that are attachable to the top so you have options in that aspect at least <clears throat> Well, and it, and it uh, seems to be modular with multi-configurability, so if you're left or right-handed, you can have um, external grips and focusing knobs and a lot of different modular type stuff that can be put on either the right or left side of the camera body. So it's uh, really innovative with that type of modularity, so it can suit everybody. So it's, they basically made a Meccano set out of the camera and that might be a good idea because a lot of uh, I put a link in the description below about a, a fashion photographer who lives in Japan and I don't really remember his name but he has a Mamiya RZ67 digital back that he has customized and it he had turned he has really turned it into a Frankenstein camera so link in the description to go and view his channel as well but anyway, <clears throat> there seem to be a lot of, you know, different little things that this camera can be, you know, have in the accessories department. But um, here's a quote from you, and I bet you'll never get who said this. Everything that is complex is not useful, and everything useful is simple. And that was this guy's life work. So if anybody out there knew who said that, Drop it in the comments below. But anyway, a little bit then that <clears throat> that is a little bit disconcerting. Uh, why don't they make this into a camera with uh, replaceable digital backs? Because if you, if you heard Fuji's announcement yesterday about the uh, you know the uh, F, uh, GFX, I can never remember those combinations. The GFX, they said that the uh, new uh, line of lenses that that camera is going to use uh, are rated up to over 100 megapixel uh, 100 megapixel sensors so they're planning ahead so why not do the same with this Hasselblad that you have replaceable digital backs because you do have that on the H5D and the H6D which are Hasselblad's two flagship uh, medium format digital SLR cameras so why not future-proof this in order to, you know, keep it going. Because, thinking about it, the Hasselblad 500C medium format camera, that was, you know, introduced in 1957. And it's still going strong with a lot of guys out there. And Hasselblad has even themselves released the digital back known as the CFV 50C. And there are a couple of guys on YouTube who have done reviews on it, Matt Granger being one of them. <clears throat> so also, <clears throat> that's one gripe for me that why not make this so you have interchangeable digital backs so when new improved sensors comes out and larger, better 
resolutions, higher megapixels, even lower megapixels, entry level sensors and so on. Why not make it so it, you have a plethora of digital backs for this camera? That would be a real game changer in my opinion. And also, for Hasselblad, you really need to make this 4K compatible. Imagine having a medium format sensor that will be able to do 4K video because they have hinted that this camera is gonna be, you know, not just for still photographers. And I don't remember if it was Sony or someone who made a camera with a live view picture development. That means that the live view didn't go offline while you take the exposure. You would actually see in the live view how the picture developed from a dark, in, from a you know a dark uh, <clears throat> display to the complete exposure. So that got me thinking. Uh, a lot of now nowadays they talk about how mirrorless is the future. Well, maybe. The future also will be shutterless because a lot of cameras yet today, like the X1D and the Fuji GFX, <clears throat> they both still have shutters, mechanical shutters. And it seems to be that one of the driving forces behind mirrorless is to prevent mirror slap up. So, why not do away with the shutter as well? I mean, is it really that difficult to do such a system? I mean, why don't we put a kind of a RAM memory in the camera before the buffer space? So the RAM memory will only collect data from the sensor until you got the desired amount of exposure and then dump it into the, uh, the buffer space and then from the buffer space to the memory storage on the camera, whatever system it might be, if it's XQD or CFast or SD or whatever you, whatever you have. So in that case we're not going to talk shutter speed anymore, maybe we're going to start to talk exposure speed. But that's just one of my, you know, spontaneous thoughts. But anyway, this is Tobias Bertram from TV Photo X 1.5 TFX, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care from now on. Bye.